student engagement and enjoyment of coding curriculum is critical. And there is an exciting, fun way to combine computer science education um, with that assessment method we mentioned, design scenarios, and that is project-based learning. This is also a big buzzword. I'm sure you've heard about it before, but I'd like to touch on it with computer science in mind and kind of give you an outline for how to do project-based learning in your classroom if you're interested, but also why it's a really effective tool for measuring and tracking progress for your students. All right, so I will move on to the next slide. All right, so what is project-based learning? Project-based learning, I might say PBL, is a teaching approach in which students are engaging in and learning through authentic, meaningful projects. So rather than doing like a summative project at the end, you've done your, your core curriculum, you've reached the end of the unit, you're going to do a big project to wrap it up. Um, Project-based learning means actually embedding the project and the instruction together. Like the project is the curriculum. It's the whole unit. So I really loved this quote that describes project-based learning as integrating knowing and doing. So students learn knowledge and elements of the core curriculum, but then they apply it to solve authentic problems and produce results that matter. And your kindergarten, first grade, and second grade students absolutely can do this. I've seen some early elementary teachers kind of shy away from the project-based learning approach because thinking about real-world authentic problems um, kind of seems big sometimes for our youngest learners, but they can handle it. And I'll give you an example of a teacher who is doing work like that now. So how to implement project-based learning in the classroom. As a computer science teacher, you may choose to present a problem or a question that relates to technology, since that's the subject that you're teaching or you're trying to incorporate into your classroom. And you can try to bed embed authenticity into the project by guiding students to examine computer science and technology already in the world around them. Um, or again, early elementary students, they know what's going on in the world of technology way more than we know, and they can tackle a real world problem through coding and programming. Um, I do know it can be tricky to come up with a challenging problem or a question for students to solve which is why I definitely recommend following what your students are interested in. Aim for engagement, what we talked about earlier. So if your students are interested in topics like protecting the environment or helping animals, then you might start with a core essential question related to that subject and then go off of that. And the UN Sustainable Development Goals that I mentioned back when we were talking about ISTE um, standards, that is a great place to start. You might recognize that these UN goals, like I mentioned, are they're already ISTE aligned and you can use them as a resource to guide student learning. So this example that you see on the screen, this is from a teacher who goes at by at EdTech Classroom. She's on Instagram and um, and Twitter. And she honed in on a UN sustainable development goal and then asked her students, how can we help reduce pollution in our oceans? The ideas that they came up with, she kind of captured in this web. And then from there, they developed a project and actually created solutions for this real world challenge. And she brought in um, the codable coding tool to investigate this further, what it would mean for keeping beaches clean and how it all connects together. So that's a great example of using a resource like the UN Sustainable Development Goals, like the ISTE computer science standards, and coming up with project ideas from there, and then incorporating technology and different coding resources to help out towards the end. So why are projects effective evaluation tools? We sort of mentioned it when we went over the design scenario as an evaluation method. Um, I will just highlight that authentic assessment and evaluation through project-based learning will allow us to like systematically document a child's progress and development because the project 
happens over time. It's not a single day where anyone could be having a bad day. They take a test and it demonstrates that they are in X group and not meeting X standards. With a project, it's it's a longer, you know, it's a longer time, uh, it's longer and time consuming and children have to put more effort towards it for a more sustained amount of time. So as the teacher, we'll be able to systematically document their progress from the start of the project to the end. And depending on the project, PBL can develop a child's ability to work both independently and with their peers, building teamwork and group skills. And there's so many components, as I mentioned, that it lets the teacher have multiple assessment opportunities. Like you could assess the planning stage. If you're doing research online, you could assess how the research works and their typing skills. You can move into the actual solution design stage. Think about how they are thinking outside the box and being innovative. Basically, it allows you, the teacher, to learn a lot more about the student as a person and as someone who is working on a project that they care about from start to finish. I really love PBL because it refocuses education on the student. It's not just the curriculum. It's it's like student human-based and you're able to capture things that can't be taught or measured with an exam. They must be like activated through experience, like drive, passion, creativity, empathy, um, resiliency. So I love projects. They give you a little glimpse at these intangibles that students have to offer. They just might not have the right medium to do it. And one last thing, computer science is a field that is all about the creation and execution of projects, producing websites, building software, creating video games, um, coders are coding for a purpose. There's an outcome. There's something that they're working towards. It's project-based in the real world. So I love to mirror that at school and have the things that we're using to evaluate learning be what you would use to evaluate a coder in the real world. <laughs>